in the in the 90s, I learned of an interesting out-of-place archaeology. It was a place called Burroughs Cave, and uh, right now online with me, or on, on the phone with me, I got one of the leading experts of, of Burroughs Cave, and, and he's got some in, interesting and fast, fascinating things to talk about. And with that, Harry, um, tell me, tell us who you are and how you got involved in this, and tell us about Burroughs Cave. Well, I, um, I got involved by buying a book from... Uh, uh, David Hatcher Childress back in the early 90s. And then I got the second book uh, from somebody else. Um, I can't remember. Might have been Joe Mahan or somebody else. But um, they had pictures of these artifacts. And uh, Paul and I had done our first video, which was the Laserium Matt video, which eventually became a cult classic. And it's like two hours long. And after that, uh, Paul picked up um, the Mystic Cave book again, and he, he knows uh, several ancient languages, I knew a few, and uh, he came up with, he started coming up with decipherments, and a lot of the decipherments had like a picture of a person, and they would have their deeds on the back, and that's one of the ways that you start to decipher, you know, unknown languages, is you look at the picture, uh, if it's a scene, an action scene, or something like that, and chances are, that the inscription has something to do with that person or that scene. And he broke the script, and then, we, and then the stones just started speaking to us and telling us what happened, and, and the whole story just fit together. And uh, um, so that's, that's pretty much the, uh, the story in a, in a nutshell. Uh, but beyond that, then um, I met Burroughs first in uh, September of 94. And I wrote two books about it. They're e-books, and they are available at um, alexanderhelios.com. And th th when people read the books, what they uh, I ask them, I say, well, what did you learn? And the first thing that, that crossword is we had, no, I had no idea that you guys had so much camaraderie with Russ Burroughs for, what, a year and a half. Because I, I met him over the phone in, like, June of 93. And I had an 800 number I, I had for business in Florida. And I ran a, a company in Florida. I ran several businesses out of there. And after I called Russ Burroughs and started questioning him and said, yeah, we got a problem. He gave all of his friends our 800 number, all of his enemies our 800 number, and the phone was just ringing off the hook. I mean, the guy, we could tell he was kind of slimy right off the bat. So. So, so as we so, get, um, but, yeah, so, so as we get into this, you know, I had, I had some dealings with Russ also, not near as early on as you did. I think it was, uh, you know, about 2003, four, something like that before I had some dealings with him, but I, I'll, I'll talk about that later as you get into it, but yeah. Uh, beyond that, um, uh, I, I took him, we made a, uh, we several trial decipherment videos just on VHS. And um, and, and then I uh, drove up to Olney from Florida and showed him the decipherment tape. He just freaked out. He just freaked out. Well, and why, so, why, 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 why do you think he freaked out? He just, he didn't well, realize. Uh, he didn't... Back, back, back then, he hadn't told anybody about the gold or anything. Oh. And he realized who it was. He, he realized he was buried in that cave, that tomb. And he sold, and he, and he sold all that stuff throughout the country and... Yeah, and he'd melted down, you know, at least uh, uh, at least over half a ton of gold. So, for those that don't know, Brewers Cave or Burroughs Cave, I sorry, I get that mixed up with Burroughs Cave. Everybody does. <laughs> it, it, just call it Alexander's Tomb, and there's no question. Okay, so it, 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 you know, you don't name if somebody stole steal something, you don't name the place that you know of the guy that looted the you know the tomb. So, uh, so, you know, that's, uh, so take us through the story, how he found this tomb, and then kind of what he did. He found it by uh, uh, purchasing a metal detector, and he got two free books when you purchased back in the early 80s, when you, uh, late 70s, when you bought a metal, a metal detector, you got free treasure guides. And two of the treasure guides had the same place listed, and he crisscrossed. The, the directions, and he ended up uh, coming into this neighborhood where I now live, and um, and and 
and uh, met some locals. They took him down to wh- where the site was about, and he told them he was with the Chicago Field Museum. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I've got that interview in the tank, but uh, uh, with the locals, and and uh, uh, and then he just kept going back and back and back, and and he found this ancient tomb. So what 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 was it in the in these treasure uh, books that that they said was there? They hadn't found the tomb yet in these treasure books, but what they say that had it had been found there that went made him go there looking. They found that there was a uh, that there was a hole that went into the ground that had what appeared to be ancient markings going down into it. Okay. And anybody deciphering the I, I made it. I put it in a video of um, discovery. The, uh, the discovery video. Uh, of 1995, I've got probably 30 or 40 um, videos on the Illinois Caves channel that uh, that show everything, all of his old maps, the, the treasure books. So is that uh, on, that's on YouTube, right? So that's your channel on right, YouTube. Yeah. That's that's it's it's called Illinois. The uh, Illinois Caves channel or the Harry Hubbard channel. Okay. Some some YouTube channels. Uh, some it all depends, I guess, on your browser. But if you search Harry Hubbard, the stuff comes up, and there's a whole section there with the Illinois Cave. And there's just a ton of decipherment videos. There's probably well, there's several hundred stones that are that are deciphered, and they're word for word, and and the letters mean the same thing every time that they're used. It's not like we made it up or accused the person. Uh, crafting it of uh, misspelling or this or that, and uh, our names never appear in any of the decipherments, that's for sure. <laughs> but other people's names do. Uh, uh, missing people from history. And so, so uh, he found this. He went in. He got. Uh, he 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 uh, took a lot of these artifacts out. He sold them, and then you guys came along and deciphered that these this belonged to who. Because this is the fascinating part. This is the part out of place archaeology yeah, that um, excites me. It's uh, the, the tomb C. Burroughs described in his book, uh, 13 crypts, and one of them had a woman in it. And um, the, all of the stones, the several stones, had Alexander the Great in different languages in Numidian, in Egyptian hieroglyph, in Punic, in Archaic Latin. And it also featured several other uh, Ptolemaic kings, and there are several stones of uh, Queen of Queens, Cleopatra, the seventh. And it was all brought over here by Alexander Helios, who was uh, Mark Anthony and Cleopatra's missing son from history. He just vanished. And that's why all these people who have spent millions and millions of dollars over in Egypt, in the Mediterranean, in the Middle East, uh, have, have been looking for Alexander's tomb for decades. And they ain't none of them found anything, and they never will. It's He's a- right over here, about four and a half miles from where I'm sitting. But the artifacts also began to show exactly where the tomb was. Really? And and then and they all matched the uh, the the, the, uh, the treasure guy. I did a video. I can't remember what it is. I think it's called um, um, uh, Harry Hubbard Lecture 100 or the third. I can't remember exactly what it is. I did a series of lectures in Connecticut in uh, 2014, and I showed all these river river stones and river maps, and it and it tells you right there. It's on it. You know, we went up this, we went up this river, and and uh, they documented on these um, stones these massive villages as they went up the Mississippi, the Ohio rivers, and um, the Smithsonian maps uh, later of these mounds along the Mississippi River um, are clearly the same. Really? Yeah. Uh, what's that big one in Mississippi? Winter Garden or something like that? Huge con- huge mound complex. It's right there on the tablet, Come. along with several other rivers and streams, and 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 uh, um, and I, I show it and and uh, get decipherments and such. And, uh, um, and, and so but it was pretty much, we didn't make anything up. And no one, the world over, and let's see, it's been 94, that's 20, in 20, 26 years, no one the world over 
has proven us wrong or even been able to slightly critique our work on this. That's a long time running. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, um, you deciphered that, that these were Egyptians, these were over there in Illinois. From my understanding, several languages. Several, so it was more than just Egyptian, it was Phoenician, it was all kinds of languages then. Yeah, and mix matches. Um, uh, you may have a Greek god spelled in, uh, out in Latin characters. Um, there's a lot of Greek characters mixed in with, um, with Egyptian characters. Um, it, it, it's, it's just Mediterranean all over the place. But not not to uh, not to shortchange anyone else. They found uh, Roman coins at, uh, along the Ohio River uh, and other places, uh, Alabama, Tennessee, uh, Illinois. Uh, you know, just fascinating ancient Roman coins, um, and um, just all over the place. It it all kind of fit everything together for a lot of people that were interested in um, out of place artifacts or or uh, ancient history of North America, on and on and on. So do you think these could be tied in with uh, with the, the Egyptian stuffs in the Grand Canyon, or is this a different culture, different? Uh, have you have you done much research onto that? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, years ago, oh, it's quite possible. I uh, wish we could see some of the tablets, but the Smithsonian if it goes against the narrative uh, of evolution or what the books are now saying about ancient North America, the Smithsonian and the government and everybody just kind of whitewashes it. Interesting. Get it out of here. I don't want to, I don't want to see it. <laughs> so, so you left a, a, a note on one of my YouTube videos on them tablets that was found in a cave in Colorado that you had uh, uh, forensics and people that could decipher languages and stuff. Well, it happens that I've been tracking down some Egyptian hieroglyphs that are written down uh, on Lake Powell, which is formed out of the Colorado River by damming it up, which would be flowed through the Grand Canyon and, oh, and opened up into this area here. And so um, a friend of mine found it. And then I found that there's another site with the same type, only different writing, same, same style of writing. So I need to get this writing to you and Paul and see what it says. See if you think this is real or if this is just some Egyptologist come there and, and camped at Lake Powell and wrote down me and my family had a great time here camping and, and that's it. <laughs> well, um, I like to send stuff through forensics first because uh, there's been a lot of stuff from the American Southwest that has not passed through forensics. But um, when, it, when it comes to here, the Egyptian hieroglyph is not written in this perfect manner. And you may have, uh, let's say, a, a tablet with over 100 characters, and then you have Egyptian hieroglyph characters spiced in there with Punic. Now, when I say Punic, I mean the language of the Phoenician. Uh -huh. Okay, you can say the Phoenician language was Punic. And, um, and, and, and you got Latin characters in there and some Greek characters, but you clearly have Egyptian characters in there too. The people wrote as they spoke and however it is that they knew how to record a character or a sound, that's what they used. So they would mix and match it then. Yeah. Interesting. Cause I know right. and, and, and agglutinative root stems, it's not like her, and, and, and it's, most of them are read from right to left, but there's some that are read in, in, uh, um, in both for feeding, which means back and forth. Some of them are read from bottom up, some of them are read from top down, and, and uh, it's all over the place. Huh. Which I show in, in my decipherment videos and Paul's decipherment videos as well. Dozens, hundreds and hundreds of deciphered tablets. And they all pointed to the same thing. Even, even, uh, uh, um, decipherments on the gold piece. Uh, and I got like several hundred gold replicas that, uh, Charles and Ward had made back in the mid 80s. Uh huh. And, uh, they, they all came up to the same thing also. So, so basically your decipherment tells the story of, of why they ended up here or, or what does it say? Just, uh, yeah, we came here to escape persecution. And see, after the Battle of Actium, uh, it took, uh, what, Mark, uh, Octavia, like a year to get back down to, uh, Alexandria. And, uh, in that period of time, Cleopatra 
uh, with the help of her son-in-law, King Uba the Second, and his wife, Cleopatra Selene, and uh, of course Alexander Helios, she whisked the stuff out. Now, how they did that, we're not sure. Uh, there's several different scenarios uh, that uh, are possible. Uh, she could have uh, had the ships transported across the um, across the uh, the Sinai Peninsula uh, into the Red Sea, and then they come around the Horn of Africa, um, um, and um, or they could have gone through the Mediterranean and just changed flags as they went. Mm. But the but the the the, 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 the tablets clearly show um, um, different places in the Mediterranean, especially like in Iberia which is modern-day Spain, and gives history lessons. Uh, there's history lessons from here in North America on some of these tablets. And, um, and, and a lot of cobras mixed with rattlesnakes. And there was, I think, only one tablet that actually had cobras and a cobra and a rattlesnake on the same tablet. Really? Yeah. I show it. I show it. <laughs> I know you show a lot of stuff on your videos, on your YouTube channel about this stuff, so... Thank you for doing that and sharing it with people. Yeah, well, it had to, had to. Uh, it was just too, it, it was, this whole project was a lot bigger than Paul and myself 25 years ago, you know, so. So, so you talk about forensics. So have you done forensics on any of these Brewer or Burroughs um, artifacts? To tablets? Yeah, probably, yeah, marble. Um, there's several different composites. There's marble. Um, there is. Um, there's only a couple of native um, stone materials. Um, um, there's some calcite, uh, some sandstone uh, pieces that could have been local. But most of the uh, the tablets that we sent into forensics were um, all from the Mediterranean, from Italy, from Egypt. Really. Uh, Carrera marble, which is very. Marble is a thumbprint. Any marble statue, any marble anywhere, um, can be traced back to its origin. Huh. And the marble in this tomb is Carrera, from Carrera, Italy. And that is uh, where Michelangelo got his uh, marble and big pieces. And there's a lot of churches here in North America that have marble, uh, Carrera marble floors and also Carrera marble statues. Carrera marble... It's phosphorescent, and and if the if, if the atmosphere is just right, say that you're in the afternoon and there's a light shower and the temperature is uh, not too warm and there's uh, relatively high humidity and the sun comes back out, Carrera marble leaves like a sheen, uh, like a um, like a prismatic purplish, bluish, yellowish kind of glow all around the piece makes them really really beautiful i mean you can see it with the naked eye and that's what it's known for the properties are quite amazing cool so so the the mudstones do you think they came from overseas too or are they from they they from around no, the no, they, area? all of them came from overseas because and people say oh well, the fox fox river over here and all these uh, it's got the same the same black stone. No, it's not. It's, that's a slate. Slate is a lot different from what you would call these mudstones, which is uh, uh, which they call lavagna. That's what the ancient Romans used to use as a blackboard. That's what that's what lavagna means is black, and uh, they use them as, uh, for chalkboards and blackboards for teaching and such like that. And they, they come from like a couple of spots, but the fossils that are embedded in them are not native to North America, especially Illinois. And the slate over in Richland County, I don't care. I've, I've had, there's a very famous geologist that says, oh, it's the same, it's the same. I prove he didn't know Jack Beans. I'm telling you, man, I've met geologists that are famous that didn't know Jack Beans about geology I, and, and, and mineral. I've been studying minerals. My father was a, was a rock hound and a mineral collector, and I've got a world-class phosphorescent and fluorescent uh, um, showcase in my shop. And and uh, so I know fossils, rocks, minerals, etc. And no, they're, they are not the same at all. So what about, do you think all these artifacts are legit or do you think some of them are frauded? Or what's your thoughts on there? And, and Well, um, what happened was is... Uh, 
all of them except a couple, uh, probably 12, were for real up until um, summer or spring of 1995. After spring of 1995, what Burrow started doing was uh, after he'd seen our assessment videos, he knew what he had and he knew characters uh, of the script. He started adding letters to the front and back of sentences, of lines, of characters. Uh, down at the bottom, he would put that um, uh, the the Egyptian mystic symbol on several stones, and 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 he, and he would get a better price for them. And uh, with, with people who didn't know, because he was not, he told his people if uh, his uh, his uh, uh, the people buying his uh, artifacts that if they had anything to do with Paul and Harry, he was going to cut them off. <laughs> And and uh, so they were they were not allowed to communicate with us, but we were trying. We could see it. We could see, hey, wow, he's added characters, and you could clearly see. And I show that also in several of my videos. I think one of them, uh, um, Afrocentric Asian Americans. I show how he added characters. That's how come we're real leery when it comes to um, to deciphering things, uh, unless it goes to, of other people's stuff. Uh, I mean, I mean, the stones that Burroughs, um, he painted them. That's what he did is he changed the stones. And we could see them, Paul and I can see them from across the room. Hmm. I mean, yeah, and, and that screwed up a lot of people who were earnestly trying to make their own decipherments. They couldn't tell the difference between the original text and what Burroughs had added on to it. You know, we was involved with Burroughs. You know, I met Burroughs. He came and spoke at our, our Ancient Historical Research Foundation sy sy Symposium back in 2004. You know, I was I had the pleasure of, of taking him around and taking him out to eat and doing things like that with him. And, uh, you know, I thought he was on the up and up. But when we also had the, our forum, Ancient Lost Treasures, and you probably remember this forum, and right when all this happened, Harry, is is that, for whatever reason, he put out a document out, out saying he was some like a colonel or a major or something in the military, and nobody asked for that, and he did it on his own for no reason at all. And then SOG or the military people got a hold of that and started and found out that it was all a fraud. He, he lied about that, and there was no reason for him to ever put out that document. And when he did that, man, he lost all credibility with me because why would you put out something like that when— when there was no need to. You remember that going on? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that happened um, with us, too. I mean, uh, uh, but many years before. He has That's... no shame, and he has no pride. And and, and you're right. And he, will lie to, he will lie, and then lie again, lie again. A lot, a lot, same to some of our modern-day politicians. <laughs> they have no shame. Nobody calls them out. And when somebody does call them out, they just continue to lie. And you're exactly right, because you warned us he was going to take us in, the Ancient Historical Research Foundation in, and you told us it'll never happen. Something will happen. The cave will collapse or whatever. He'll never take you in. And, and you was right, yeah. man. He said the cave collapsed and it never happened. <laughs> yeah. And it always comes out that's coming next spring. Next spring. i got a university. Uh, yeah, the university. Yeah, he turned it over to a university, and they declared it was too unsafe to go down in there, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, uh, he goes, I, and I have nothing else to do. I forgot where it was. I know every – you you could ask me questions pretending that I'm Russell Burroughs, and I could give you exactly the same answers as he would. <laughs> we could do that sometime if you wanted to. <laughs> we'll have to do that. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, because I, I mean, we had so many dealings with him, and, he, and then he spread it all these lies about me that I was a gun runner and a drug runner. I was uh, selling machine guns on the black market, that I was a convicted felon, uh, and he, wherever I was living at, he would call the sheriff's department and tell them that I was a drug runner and a gun runner. Really? And and sometimes they would come and, and visit me and question me or whatever. Never did they investigate him. Never. Uh, because he was a good old boy from Illinois, I suppose, or something. So uh, what we had to do is make it look like Whenever I was in Illinois doing research, it appeared, and I told everybody that I was in, everybody knew that I was in Florida. And when I was in Florida, we, we everybody into thinking that I was here in Illinois. That's what we had to do. Even with people that were, that appeared, a lot of backstabbers and, 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 uh, um, and, and um, cutthroats on that, even 
people that pretended to be on our side, they they were feeding Burroughs information, and so we had them feeding Burroughs false information. Ah. And that's how we had to work for years. Well, the bottom line is the stuff in that in that cave, if it's if it's real, is unbelievable. And and I'm gonna hijack. I I got a bunch of art pictures of artifacts myself. A friend of mine had a a bunch of the artifacts and let me photograph them all. But I'm gonna hijack some of the images off some of your videos to put in this too, so people can see because they are unbelievable. Uh, what friend did you have that that had some? Gary Taylor. Do you know Gary Taylor? Oh man, do you have do you have pictures of his artifacts? I I photographed them all except for one thing, two things. He wouldn't let me photograph. Um, he had the head headband and the armband um, of like the cobra or the snake thing. He wouldn't let me photograph them, but he had them, and we'd done some tests on them. But I don't remember that day that we did tests on them. We was testing a bunch of different things. We was we was testing. How many artifacts of his did you get to photograph? Well, I photographed them all, but not all my pictures took come out very good. They didn't all come yeah, out. Some hard of them. To get pictures of them. Some of they they come out fuzzy. My camera was messed up, so I don't have. I photographed them all. How many but, did he have? Oh, I'm gonna guess. This is just a guess because it's been a long time ago. But I'm gonna guess a hundred or more. Wow. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna make a deal with you. <laughs> you send me a you you send me an SD card with those, and I'll send you an SD card that's got thirty five hundred on it. Okay, it's a deal. Um. <laughs> it's a deal. Like I said, anybody my, sends, my my anybody that sends me artifacts, uh, pictures of their artifacts, I send them my pictures of artifacts. <laughs> That's the deal, and they are allowed to use my artifact pictures, and I can use their artifact pictures. Oh. It works both. I don't care if somebody's got a collection of only twelve, uh, and I they like can that. they can all actually be uh, uh, traded. Uh, this one guy in Evergreen, Colorado. He had like 12, 14, 18 stones, and he claimed that he could decipher anything, and he, he claimed that these stones were, were fake because he couldn't decipher them. And the guy could barely, he was barely literate in English, oh. okay, on his website. And, and, uh, and, and I looked at his, at his pictures, and they were all tainted. 100% of his stones had burrows adding characters. So even if he was proficient in ancient languages, and he didn't know what the, what the tainted characters were. He, he he would have never come up with anything. Well, that, I got a I got a word in here in the middle, but that don't make sense. That don't make sense. You know, uh, that don't make sense. Interesting. And, and so he would have been. And and so, but there's there's been other collections that I've seen where every every stone somebody may have five stones, and they were all tainted. Hmm. Interesting. So, do you think? I mean, I th I. I hear rumors and that you're still trying to get access to to this cave. Do you think that there's still things in there? From my what I've learned and studied, he got everything out except for maybe some clay part, some clay pots with some parchment papers in them, which would be fascinating to see and understand what they say. But other than that, rather than some skeletons, you know, everything he cleaned everything out. Unless there's other tombs that he didn't find, what what's your thoughts on there? My thought is that there's no way one man could have gotten it all. You think there's still a lot more in there? Because remember, yes. remember on our our forum that guy came. Uh, what did he go by? Southern or I can't remember. Southern Southern uh, Patriot or something. Something like that. He had he actually came on as two different people, two different handles, mm -hmm. but he claimed and Burroughs backed it up that he. Burroughs took him in there, and the only thing that he saw was these remaining couple, you know, skeletons laying on slabs and, and some uh, these these uh, pots with these parchments in it. Um, that guy um, proved to be, um, he had uh, supposedly worked in, at uh, the Richland Memorial Hospital with Burroughs' wife. Yeah, yeah, that's the guy. And um, what was his handle? Southern... Southern Patriot it started with a P. Yeah, something like that. I can't remember, but yeah. Yeah, and and um and all he and he we were going to um uh, uh somebody a couple of people that knew me had been corresponding with him, and and I called him out as a fraud. Ah. And I did it. I did it by just saying, okay, so 
um, um, so you, uh, in which direction would you head out of Aldi? Well, he, he, he can't remember. Uh, do you remember if you had to walk in, in, uh, and, uh, which is, uh, do you remember any power lines? Well, no, I, I don't think I remember power, which is the power lines that go right through Terry. I mean, it's right uh, there. I mean, I show you, uh, on several of my videos exactly where it is. I mean, uh, it's not like it's a secret. And I'm just waiting on somebody to come up with a million dollars to purchase the property so that we can do some excavation. The guy that owns it, uh, wanted a million dollars like 20 years ago. I don't know if he still does, but, um, it, you know, it's, we, we have to, we'd have to get ac full access to the property. And there's, it's so remote. You have to walk uh, a quarter of a mile minimum from any direction to get to the spot. Uh, -huh. uh from, uh, even the closest road, the closest place where you can park, you still have to go over hills, dales, and, you know, and, and into ravines and such to, to get to it it's not easy to get to so so you're saying you think that burroughs put this guy up to it he was up to saying that he went in but it really never happened because i don't doubt that at all after he threw out the phony you know military records when there was there was no reason to to say anything about military at all you know southern partisan that's it that's it southern partisan yeah and and um and then so, so I had so I had like a consortium of like three or four people that would okay. He wanted to fly over here from England. Yes, he was working okay, in England. Okay, but then okay, I said okay. Well, I'll help you. I'll, I'll get you the trip, and then you can come here, show us, and then you go. Oh no, no, he wanted to come here, spend a week uh, with his relatives in in Richland County, and he wanted us to rent him a car. He wanted to travel first class. It just it just got so bizarre uh. <laughs> southern partisan that's what it was yeah and um and and it's like and he can and he and he, and he, did, he couldn't even guarantee that he could uh show us anything but now the guy that i met later who you may have heard of is arn offered yep okay he, I uh, believe, was actually there you you believe he actually went in yeah and and, and gary taylor was friends with arn yeah, and on Umford, um, was uh, he, he was credible. I mean, when I first heard of it, heard of his story, I think it was Shrewsbury that uh, that hooked me up. Who was it hooked me up with Arn Umford? And he had his friend John with him. And John moved down to Australia, and he's all he has since passed away. And Arn Umford uh, runs a cabinet shop in um, Provo. Out, yeah, he was out in Vernal, but I think he's just passed away also. Oh, well, see, there you go. He was actually there. Huh. And, um, and, and, and when I called him up, I, I was going to just destroy him. And, and I come to find out that you know, the guy was credible. And he, okay, for your listeners, Arn Ufford is the man who invented the Mantis style of Kung Fu fighting. Well, I didn't know that. He was a Kung Fu master, oh. and he trained CIA agents I didn't know back that. in the 60s and 70s. Huh. And a lot of these movies where you see these guys, these CIA guys whipping out their Kung Fu, a lot of that came from his teachings. Huh. And, and uh, um, he had a school, he had a Kung Fu school in uh, Beijing, and he also had a Kung Fu uh, school either in San Fran or San Diego or someplace else. Hmm. And I found a forum. He had a forum. Uh, uh, he didn't have it, but one of his students had put together a forum where, where his students could converse with each other and such. And I'm sitting there reading this stuff with my mouth wide open going, what? Really? Arn Ufford was the on is, is the only man alive to history's sake that I know of that I could talk that could not okay there's other guys that there's plenty I guess in Kung Fu experts that can walk across rice paper we're talking stuff that's like one third of a thousandth of an inch thick uh -huh. they can walk across it without tearing it Arn Ufford could run across rice paper without tearing it really <laughs> I'm telling you the truth <laughs> wow 
So anyway, I never, um, I never and, knew and this. I tried to get him out. I tried to get him out, but he told me that his wife was real sick. He couldn't leave her. And But I had the money to fly him out here. And and uh, I told him, I'll take care of you. I said, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll put you up. I said, you don't have to drive. You don't have to do nothing. Just come out here in, in, in the woods. And and uh, see if you can remember this. And he 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 didn't. He wouldn't do it. He well, backed I, out. Well, I I think Arn was. He gave his word, and he was a man of his word. It's kind of what I understood. You know? Well, that's what I that's what I learned in the end. Yeah, I mean that's what I learned. I did two interviews with him, and I and I and I uh, transcribed them, and I'll send those to you. Cool. They're in uh, Microsoft Word. I'll cool. send them to you. And it's it's quite fascinating. I mean. No doubt about it. It's quite fascinating. Well, I know that Arn Arn was into a lot of different things, and he was he was had access to some interesting things here in Utah, also. Arn Upford was a respected man, and 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 when he told me how he met Burroughs, it all made sense. It all made sense. It wasn't something that you just pulled out of a hat. And that you meet this guy. I said, well, how did you meet him? He said, I met him at a speed lunking uh, convention in St. Louis. And he told me they were like 84, 85 or something. I'll send you the transcript. Cool, thank you. It's pretty amazing. But then, what, as, as you and I connected again, now you, you, you uh, purchased our videos, what, 20 years ago or so. Yeah, and, it was, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, I did. And... And so you've been knowing about this for decades. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, uh, um, got back in touch with each other when I saw some of the stuff that you've been putting out on your videos that I thought was really cool. That got, The stuff that was coming out of Colorado, it was in the same, not the same exact, but the same artisan, the same kind of style as what we had on a lot of these stones. Some of these stones are just beautiful. I mean incredibly intricate, thousands and thousands of little bitty lines carved on a black stone, and there's no mistakes. Every line is perfect. Every line is, is just well embellished and, and just, I mean, if the guy walked in the room, you could say, hold the stone. It looks just like a picture, like you've taken a picture and put it on that stone. Yep. And I mean, hours and hours and hours of work and artisans went into these stones. And Burroughs was selling them for five dollars a piece. Hmm. Yeah, I know that. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't personally own any of Burroughs's stuffs. So I I did. Gary Taylor gave me one small rock, and all it had was a star on it. But I did have uh -huh. when when Burroughs came to speak to us, he gave me a tablet, a marble tablet to give to Professor Jones to have some some tests done on it, and I'm not sure what the test came out to. I never did ask to find out. One, one, Like I said, when Burroughs did that fake military deal, when there was no reason at all to do that, I, I just it just soured me on the whole deal. Well, Stephen Jones, Dr. Jones, he's still around. Yeah. Um, I got an email from him here about a month ago. Yep, he is still around. Yep. If you're in tight with him, see if you can get a picture of it, or, or do you have pictures of it? Oh, I, I have some pictures of it. Yeah. I would like to see it. <laughs> okay, it's, uh, man, I can't remember what it looked like, but I do have some pictures of it. I took pictures of it before I, I gave it to Professor Jones, so, yeah. I scanned I scanned all of Virginia Horrigan's photographs back in 2002. Oh, wow. I had pictures of all the Isaac tablets. Um, I had, um, I have, uh, pictures of Scott Walter's tablets, which was Beverly Mosley's, and also John White, and Jim Shears's, uh, Fred Reedholm, uh, Zena Helburn. I had so many, uh, um, I've got just thousands, thousands of them. I, I know that Ow. there, I, I believe you, because I know there's nobody has followed this as thoroughly as you. <laughs> well... And then people say, oh, the Burroughs faked them all. These are obviously fake. Well, why would somebody fake 3,500, 4,000 stones and sell them for five, six bucks a piece? You know, in the dawning, in the, in the early stages in the 80s. Then the price went up. To, but when I got involved in 1994, uh, he was charging 300 bucks for just one that would sit in your hand. Prices went up. Really? 
he, he made a lot of money, yeah. And we were telling people at Isaac, don't buy his stone. Don't buy it. And then John White, Dr. White, goes out in the parking lot and Burl sells him a, a stone for $10,000. You're kidding. No, I don't kid. Wow. No, it was it was it John White. He had spent like over $60,000 on stones before the $10,000 one. Really? I don't know what Gary Taylor paid. He never did tell me, but it was... It was later on, so I'm sure he probably paid a pretty penny for him. Yeah. But yeah. I, but like I said, he did also end up with that copper headband uh, and the armband. Um, I wish uh, I'd Somebody uh, else had some of those, too. I've got pictures of some of them. Ah. Uh, armband and, and uh, um, like a copper uraeus. Well, it was like a copper. It was like a snake. Both the, you know, yeah. it was like the tail oh, and, and the, yeah, and the head. Turned up for the for the for the headband, and then it was just kind of a rounded circular deal that fit on your arm um, for the mm -hmm. armband. And, and when you see Burl's drawings of of the of the skeletons in the tomb, it shows one of them skeletons having that headband and that armband on. That wasn't actually Burl's um, rendition. Ah, that was Burl's. Uh, the the one that who actually did that drawing was Jackson Judge. Ah, okay. And Jackson Judge, I've got his manuscript uh, all copied. He loaned his manuscript that had not been published to Jim Shears. And uh, Dr. Shears had it for over a year. And Jackson Judge, this is back in the late 80s, before, way before we were ever involved, held on to it for over a year. And Jackson Judge wanted his manuscript back. So Dr. Shears finally sent it back to him. And then it was in 92, I believe, that um, uh, Burroughs Cave Volume 2 came out by Dr. Shears. And it's word for word Jackson Judge's manuscript. Really? Yep. Wow. Interesting. So what do you think happened to all of, they just, all of these uh, people from Egypt that came over here, they just assimilated into the... The Native American culture, what do you think happened to them? Um, what, I, it, it, what I think doesn't matter because what I think is just speculation. Right. It's only what I know that, that matters. But if we speculate, uh, I, I don't know how to answer a question starting with what if or suppose that. However, I can see that civilizations come and go due to disease. Um, uh, like uh, out, out in the Southwest, um, people were using creosote from the chaparral plant, which had arsenic in it. Uh, here, you could ha they could have been using pottery, that there was a high content of cadmium in the clay. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that happens is um, when, a, when a civilization begins to shrivel up or dry out, is the women become infertile. Uh, then, then the men become infertile, and then, and then they simply die an early death. So uh, it could have been some disease. It could have been some poisoning. Uh, could have been uh, battles and wars. We, uh, we, we don't know. It's just all anything that I can say is just speculative in that manner. So as far as these, all these uh, artifacts that was found in the tomb, then they're all attributed to Helios, all that, or, or is it just a, 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 a library of ancient records of, of what went on with them, or, or what, what was that tomb? It's everything. It's history. It's greetings cards. It's love poems. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, um, history lessons. It's about famous people, famous generals, battles of ancient times. Uh, maritime tablets, death tablets, um, carvings of animals that don't exist anymore. Um, it's just all over the place. And, and there's, there's no way anybody could have ever faked any stones in five different dead languages. <laughs> you ain't going to do it, man. <laughs> and, and so you guys positively identified five different separate languages. Yes. Cool. That would be uh, archaic Latin. Punic, Egyptian hieroglyph, uh, Greek with some Demotic, and also Numidian, or ancient Berber, which is a very, 
Robert Shrewsbury, so, 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 yeah. But uh, finish that, and then I got some questions about that for you. Well, uh, they sent in. Um, I, I was to understand at the time that these artifacts didn't actually come from Brewers Cave. Now, there's a difference between Burrows and Brewers. Yes. And and you're, and, um, and you're going right where I was going to ask you. Some of the artifacts yeah, were, one of the artifacts were Brewer's Cave, but the others come out of supposedly some tombs where some giants were found in Kanab. Or near there. Or, or, or near, near there, Brewer's yes. Cave. Okay. That's all I knew. Okay. And, 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 um, and Shrewsbury had some other stuff, too, that he, he didn't let out. I think he had some uh, human hair because of the, the human factor. Yeah. Uh, even even Jackson Judge back in the late eighties said that Russ Burroughs had a had a Ziploc baggie that had that clearly had uh, green finger bones in it. Really? So yeah, and so <clears throat> the thing was is um, you know there's, when you're starting to put out ancient artifacts of of actual human skeletons and such like that because I've even sent into forensics. Uh, some uh, teeth and bones of humans that were found here in Illinois, and 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 they passed forensics, but they weren't as old as what we were dealing with here. But the the the, the, the pieces that they sent in um, to forensics, all of them passed. All of them passed, and they sent in. Well, um. I have here, it's because of our last conversation, Yep. I dug into my files, watch out, <laughs> and I have right here in front of me six, not one, two, six forensic analysis of stones and have of, of actual, uh, the, uh, the lead donut. Yeah, I, I have that and one. And different fibers that Shrewsbury and Ghost Wolf took into the lab to be tested. And they are fascinating. I mean, um, here's, here's one. The material is identified as animal hair from belly fur or, uh, uh, or ermine-like creature. The actual identity of the mammal is unknown. Mm. And then he gives you some of the deposits that he found on them. 
If this is old stuff, it's for real. Hmm. Here's nothing. Um, the material is identified as wool from a, a, a sheep or a camelid. A fragment was woven on a very complex loom or crocheted. The pattern is extremely complex. Usually dense and uh, unusually dense and very compact. All the knots are dramatically and unusually tight. And this this piece was fantastic. It goes on to tell it has ferric oxide in it, organic debris, uh, different deposits. These deposits are indicated in formations that match database samples. Because he's got all these samples. He's got huge cabinets of samples. Database samples from the most ancient Nazca or Egyptian textiles. The fragment, however, is of an unknown culture. Hmm. Um, here's another one. Uh, let me see here. Here's one of the lead donuts. Now, when we're talking about a lead donut for your audience, we're talking about a piece of lead that is hammered out with a in a circle about what four and a half four inches four inches in diameter yeah, with a hole three, in the, three three or four something like that yeah with a, about a with two a inch hole in the center probably a, an inch two yeah an inch two inch hole and it came out of Brewer's Cave okay okay if you say so yep I say and so <laughs> they're, they're, they are they are very very thin yes uh, I'd say probably what a sixteenth of an inch or less yeah. And they, there are inscriptions on them. There's letters, and there's animals carved on them. And some of these animals you cannot even see with the naked eye. You have to have a magnifying glass to see them. And it passed. It, it flew through. And uh, for instance, because I didn't think, I thought it was going to show up or come out as a fake, because it was lead, number one, and number two. Because there were these tiny little bitty pictures, and one of them was of a horse, a full horse in gallop, and it was a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch. And it had his face, his, his, his hindquarters, the muscle tone, everything was there. And I figured there's no way somebody can do that without a magnifying glass or something. Right. And then when we sent it in, I asked Frank, I said, how in the world could they have done it? He goes, oh, well, it's simple. We picked the sink. He put water in his hand. And he dumped that water on the on on the lead um um the lead donut the lead plate whatever we we'll call them donuts. And when he did, that horse doubled in size. It was over half an inch because the adhesion of the lead, the water droplets adhere to it, and they and it make, makes it magnifies it. Hmm. It's fascinating. Interesting. And because these deposits are indicated. In formations that match database samples of burial dates, 600 A.D. to 800 A.D. Wow. So, so let me ask you about Arinda, because, you know, they, they said that some of the Burroughs Cave stuff was real and all that. And so people started saying, well, man, they're, they're a fraud company. They don't really do real. They, you pay them money and they just give you something. Tell me about them. Is, you know, you was, I, and I asked you this before, and you was telling me their history and how legit they are. Tell me about them. Well, he's got a video on Vimeo, and I'll send you that link, and you can put it there, and everybody can meet the guy. Okay. Everybody can meet him. He is a metallurgist on, on, on the clouds. He looks down on this planet like it's a cue ball. And... And he is, he spends a lot of time in China. He, he's uh, on retainer of, for the Chinese government. He has written two books about ancient Chinese jade that are fascinating. And these are expensive books. I mean, I mean, they are hundreds of dollars a piece. And the guy is straight up, up board, and he is just brilliant. He's got an IQ through the roof. He is a ceramicist. He is an artist. And and he's just so laid back, and I need to we need to get some more interviews with him because his genius needs to carry on to the next generation. Yeah, I, I agree need to with interview you. him. We need you. Uh, and I need to interview him. I agree with you. Yeah, set that up for us. 
<laughs> I'll see what I can do. Thanks. I'll see what I can do. I'd like to hook you up with some of those uh, artifacts and pieces that, that you say you got riding on from Colorado. That would be interesting. But some of the stuff that guy was hauling out of the, that tomb in Colorado is just beautiful. And, and it's three-dimensional. And that's a lot of the stuff that we see here uh, from Burroughs, uh, from, from this tomb, is um, like a, a statue of an eagle or a falcon that's uh, two and a half feet high. Mm. Two and a half feet tall. Wow. And, and nobody knows what happened to them. Wow. Huge. Not just one, but dozens. And and I think in, in one of the videos, I show like 20 or 30 or there's probably 100 or 200 stones just talking about Helios. Helios in rituals, wife of Helios, married to Helios, Helios at different ages. See, he was missing from Egypt after the, uh, no, excuse me, from ancient Rome, because he was carried back with his sister and his little brother, uh, uh, Philadelphus, uh, back to Rome and uh, uh, bound in gold chains and used in Octavian's triumph parade. And after age of 10, he vanishes off the map. There's nothing ever said about him again then. Correct. Ah. And... People to say, oh, they're looking for Alexander the Great. No, no, no. They need to know that all of these kings were buried together, including Cleopatra the Seventh. So, so nobody ever saw him again. And then you have the story of uh, Caracalla or Caracalla, however you want to say it. Oh, that he had been to the tomb of Alexander the Great, and he had a golden goblet to prove it. Well, man, if you've been to the tomb of Alexander the Great, I think I'd have a little thing more than a coffee mug. <laughs> Yeah. So so if there was that big of a culture, that big of a there's probably more tombs, more of this stuff. Has there been any of these stones, artifacts, things like this found not that Brewer Burroughs didn't take out? Has there been other things like that found in the area, not inside this tomb? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um uh there was a guy that found a uh um the head of a staff in one of the creeks nearby. Really? Uh, there's been all kinds of rumors that I couldn't uh, um, um, authenticate uh, through the years. And and uh, Roman coins found all over Illinois, Ohio, and and uh, the circle cross, or what they call the medicine wheel or whatever, that seems to show up everywhere. And all we're saying is the mound builders who worship the sun, who used the circle cross, they were all tied in together directly and indirectly with this culture. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, there's uh, there's markings on uh, all kinds of places. There's, what, 28, um, uh, 28 ancient uh, sites in southern Illinois alone. And there's countless mounds. There are mounds, uh, a huge mound that covers like uh, uh, 20 acres within a mile and a half of where this tomb is. And on the other side, there's another huge mound. And then there's smaller mounds all over the place. And just down the skillet fork, there is a mound that is like a mile by a mile and a half. It's called on the G on the USGS map, Big Mound. And there's also Fletcher's Ridge uh, in, in Wayne County. Fletcher's Ridge was a flat top mound that was so big, it had five huge mounds on top of it. Really? Yep. There, there's a lot of interesting things out there and uh, history won't or or i guess culture today's culture won't acknowledge you know that that there was something like you're saying you know the egyptians here the romans here the or the the vikings here the you know they just they just want to hide it for whatever reason it doesn't make any sense to me yeah i i i keep i keep asking the the echo well was that a fake mound <laughs> <laughs> yeah and but uh, some of the other stuff that shrewsbury and uh and ghost Wolf, sent into the lab, they sent in some metal pieces. And um, and it was some dark metal pieces, and I had seen it, uh, oh, half an inch by three quarters of an inch or so. Mm -hmm. And they tested out as a very primitive form of bronze that Frank Aon said was before 1000 B.C. 
He right. said it predates the kelp. He said this is big. Really? Because see, he can tell you the oxide. He can. He's got these little measuring things. He can test uh, the metals in them. He's a chemist. Um, I mean, the guy is just incredible, and, really? and he lays it all out. Hmm. He is. He is the top dog, and he can go. I mean, uh, with testing and 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 all these other uh, forms of testing. Uh, um, uh, it's just unbelievable how how intricate and involved in testing artifacts can be. Yeah, it sounds like it. So, if, they, if somebody's wanting to sell something, they can spend, let's say, a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars on on, on the testing of an artifact and know everything about it as much as you can know, and boom, that artifact's worth thirty, forty thousand dollars. And and he's an expert on. On Chinese jade, I need to I need to talk to him about something. So interesting. Hey, so well, I got... if you're an expert on Chinese jade, that's also going to make you an expert on South American jade. Mm -hmm. So I I got another question for you, and I, and I don't know this for a fact. It's just me speculating this, and it might not even be so. But I think that you came in, you and Paul came in contact or had some small plates with writings on them that came out of Brewer's Cave. If that's true, it one, is it true? And if it's true, did you decipher them? What did they say? No, we had, um, we, I had pictures. I think I still have them here somewhere. Okay. I had pictures of the, um, of the, um, uh, the little square box in the booklet, like what you've seen, what you described. Yeah. And all we had was pictures. Okay. And we said, okay, send them in. And let's see what the metal is, because it kind of looked like brass, and it didn't look like gold. And and there have been so much, there's been so much melee concerning um, Brewers Cave, which which for your audience, tell them the general area of where the supposed Brewers Cave is, is supposed to be located. It's it's in central Utah. Yeah, uh, I believe on the west side of the. Washita, what would they call a mountain range? Wa Wasatch Mountains, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so. So I, I know that on on um, Brewer's Cave, I tracked down, you know, a stone box that had some five five uh, looks like copper plates in it, uh, with writings on them, and then it was wrapped with a cedar, a, a juniper bark. And uh, I tracked down where that was, and I had that carbon dated with, with Professor Jones, and it dated between 50 and 350 B.C. So until till I got that carbon dating, I thought the whole thing was a fraud, but then that made me think, hmm, maybe there's something to it. Now, still, Brewer could have found an ancient or an old Indian tomb with a, with a juniper bark bed or something, you know, and, and taken that and made this. You know, I mean, anything's possible. You know, but but that leads more credence to it than just it was modern. You know, there's something to it, and and um, um, there are people that know more than than um, than what they're saying. Uh, did you? And, and Robert Shrewsbury is one of them. Yes. I wish that he would yes. open up a little more. Yes, He's he is. up there in the years. Yes, he has. And, and I wish that he would open up more. And have you ever read his life story? Um, I read his book about about that. I don't know if that had really his life story, but yeah, I've talked to I I talk, I've talked to Robert extensively on a lot of different occasions, and and they've even did I've, you I've, read Did you read that when his mother when his mother had him, she put him in a shoebox and put him up in the closet, and the box fell off the off the top shelf? Ah, I don't know. I don't remember reading that. Huh? Unbelievable. And I said, is that really true? He goes, yeah. Yeah, his mother had him, and uh, she put him in a shoebox and then put him in the closet. Huh. Wow. And he survived. Wow. The guy is a walking miracle. Yeah. Well, not only is he walking miracle, he's really sharp. <laughs> I like it. I've always, I liked him from the first time I met him. Yeah. And and uh, when uh, when I asked him about somebody in particular, he he uh, gave me the truth. Yeah. And when he ever he asked me about somebody, I would give him the truth. Yeah. Yep. There was only one way to deal with Robert Shrewsbury, and that was straight up. Yep. Yep. 
Well, you got anything else you want to say, Harry? Uh, give us your 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 YouTube channels, your your Facebook channels, your how if people want to buy some of your stuff, how do they get a hold of you to do that? Your email, whatever you want to give out. Okay, the uh, for email, all somebody's got to do is type in Google, contact Harry Hubbard. It's it's as simple as that. That's pretty simple. And uh, and our webpage comes up, which is IllinoisCaves.com. And the books, uh, e-books are available. There was no way to print them up because it's just way too many color pictures. Tons of gold pictures. I show the uh, uh, the ledger sheets where they were pulling out gold. I showed all the uh, all the uh, artifact inventory sheet that they had from the uh, mid '80s. Wow! And that's on um, www.alexanderhelios.com. Um, and the, the the Facebook is Illinois Cave. And the YouTube channel, just YouTube search Harry Hubbard. But I have a lot of other things. I've moved on. I've, I've covered, because I collected ancient coins before I've I got into that. all this. Ancient coins, ancient maps. You kind of cover all that ancient yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, I was I was fully grounded in ancient uh, uh, awareness long before we hit in on the Burroughs Cave stuff. And, and uh, with my uh, medieval maps, uh, archaic maps. And um, and ancient Roman coins and, and such like that, and and then also currencies. I've done several uh, videos recently on on uh, currencies from around the world, and show different things about that. And 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 uh, right now I'm working on a on a video series that's going to be tie. It, it's something. It's like the origin of chaos or the world of chaos. And I'm showing books that I've never shown anybody before. And that's what I do. I show old books from the 1700s, uh, 1800s, and I show what they say, and even 1600s. Uh, and because I was a book collector, I collected books and old books, antique books. And I show what these books say, and then I, I, I give what the modern stuff is, too, you know. Well, with that said, Harry, man, I appreciate you taking the time and talking to us. And, and that's a wrap, unless you got anything else you want to say. No, I think we've covered a lot of ground. We have, and I appreciate you taking the time to, to share it with us. Thank you.